You are listening to the Cattle Call Podcast. This is the place where computer-aided design and drafting meets humor and practicality, with a touch of business acumen thrown in for fun. Jim and Rocco, the owners of Zentech Consultants, the premier U.S. technology consulting firm for architecture, engineering, construction, and manufacturing, discuss the fascinating world of CAD with some humor and some honesty. The Cattle Call Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Cattle Call Podcast with Jim and Rocco from Zen Tech Consultants. I am Jim, your fun and charming host, and with me, as always, is my partner. It's Rocco, and I'm glad he didn't use the loquacious, uh, you know, <laughs> gobbledygook that he gave yeah. the other guys God, at Autodesk the other day. <laughs> God, God forbid Rocco learned some vocabulary. We can't have that. That would be requires some thinking. That's just not acceptable. All right, but because you made fun of my speech, you know what that means. That means now it's time for the engineering joke of the week. Yes, you still have to suffer through that. All right, so so Rocco, so there are two wind turbines stood next to each other in this big open field, right? And, and the first turbine looks at the second one. He says, hey, man, what kind of music do you like? And the second wind, time, wind turbine, he thinks for a minute, and he says, well, I guess I'm a big metal fan. Ah, <laughs> huh? that one took a minute, but it's good. I like that. <laughs> where's Where's your drum beat? <laughs> it's in there. It's just you can't hear it on your end. It'll be there in the in the in the episode. So, <laughs> it's a terrible <laughs> joke, but I love it. All right, so we have a guest on today. So we have Tim Yaris, the Civil 3D product manager for Autodesk, and a great friend of the show, uh, is back with us today to talk about Civil 3D and all the cool new features available in the latest 2023.2 update. So, Tim, as always, it's a pleasure to have you here, man. Thanks for joining. Hey, it's great to be here. I, I, I don't know how I'm going to follow that joke, but, you know, I'm, I'll do my best. <laughs> yeah, I'll yeah. do my best. <laughs> Thank, I know. Thanks for saving me from him, Tim. It's, you know... <laughs> I'm here for you, Rocco. Thank <laughs> you, buddy. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Somebody's got to save him from me. All right. So, so Tim, before we get into all of the, the fun new tools and features uh, in this release, why, do, why don't you kind of refresh, refresh, excuse me, our listeners a little bit on your background and what you do over at Autodesk? Sure. So, yeah. So, as you mentioned, Jim, so I am the Civil 3D product manager here. And so what that really means is I spend a great deal of time talking to customers and basically kind of making sure that we have a really solid understanding of what's really important to our customers and what are some of the kind of roadblocks that are getting in their way of using Civil 3D successfully and um, finishing projects, making money, and just making things better for them. And so I spend a lot of time just kind of really digging into what those issues are that customers are having and what their requirements are for future versions and spend a lot of time kind of taking those, analyzing them, making sure we have a really good understanding of them, and then building out our product roadmap to kind of balance accomplishing those types of requirements against where we want the products to go strategically in the future. And so it's, again, it's it's a little bit of art, a little bit of science to kind of balance all that out, but we do our best here. And I, I think we're doing a pretty solid job. I like it. A little, little art and stuff. So kind of like technological alchemy. I like it. This is a good right. concept. <laughs> I think that Very should yeah. be your job title. Techno technological alchemist. alchemist. I like that. Sounds like so that. much better. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. See, see if the big wigs over there will let that one slide. That's going to look good on your business cards. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, business cards for sure. That's it. All right. So, you know, one, one of the biggest things, uh, you know, that, that Civil 3D users always look for in an update is speed improvements. Uh, you know, Civil data can, it's just, it's immense, right? And, and, and even minor speed improvements can have a really big impact on the daily load for, you know, those of us who work kind of head down in those infrastructure trenches. Uh, look, you know, when, when you're dealing with multiple surfaces and hundreds of pipes and grading objects and, you know, giant point clouds, right? Every bit of speed, performance, and, and reliability that you can pull out of, your, out of the software, it becomes vital. Um, especially when you consider, right, for, for a lot of civil folks, unfortunately, their systems are often just barely above the Autodesk minimum spec requirements for Civil 3D. And, and every time they run a major command, they just sit there holding their breath and praying to the laptop gods that the, the laptop doesn't give up the ghost on them. Uh, so, you know, Tim, I, I know that performance has actually been a big focus for you in the past couple of releases we've talked about. 
Uh, what has your group kind of done in that respect for this latest update? Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, I think we've mentioned before when I've been on that, I mean, we've done a whole bunch of customer satisfaction research over the last few years, just all around civil 3D and um, by far and away, the number one customer pain point that people let us know about is performance. It's no secret at all. I mean, you said it yourself. I mean, as projects get bigger, the processing time goes up. Um, but generally speaking on the performance side, I mean, yes, we're absolutely still working on it. And there's still a whole bunch of new enhancements in the 23.2 update. Uh, let's see, so where are we there? So some of the big things that we have as far as, think about in the cases where you have like a couple of different drawings open at the same time. Um, if a lot of those drawings had references and how many civil 3D drawings don't have X refs yeah. or D refs in them, right? Um, we identified a lot of cases where like switching, just doing something like just switching in between those two drawings would, would there was a lag there. So you'd switch it, you'd click that other tab at the top of the screen to switch to a new drawing and it would go and kind of reload all the references that were associated with it. It would just slowed things down. And so we did a bunch of work on making sure that that drawing switching type of behavior, it only was gonna reload now just the references it needed. So if, if something happened like between the time that you were in that drawing in the previous session, then it would reload the drawings. But if nothing happened, then it would just switch to the switch to that second drawing without a lag like it had before. So things like that and just, I mean, faster editing of pipe networks and section views, faster deleting pipe net, pipe networks and sections and that sort of thing. Like if you if you've worked with Civil 3D a lot, and I know most people on here have, I mean, pipe networks, they can be huge. There can be tons of section views in the drawing. And in some cases, like if you either edited or even deleted one of those components, I mean, there was a lag there. I mean, you'd have to like, you'd hit delete and then just kind of wait for the pipe network to rebuild mm -hmm. or that sort of thing. And so we, we, in some cases, it took more time to just delete something than it took to create the object to begin with. So <laughs> that's, and that's, that's not, that's, that's really not an exaggeration either, unfortunately. And so we, we did a bunch of work to just make sure that um, those types of things were a lot more performance so that you could just kind of execute a command like delete, for example, or drag a, a sample line to stretch it or something like that. And then just making it so that the program responded, responded faster. It just executed that command more quickly and it allowed you to get kind of back to work more quickly. So things like that. And then big thing that we did was um, the whole idea of making things just outside of a viewport. Like if you were in a viewport and you're only focused in on a certain area and you did something like panned or zoomed or um, did some sort of other behavior like that, it would redraw all those things that were outside the viewport. And it's like that that's just didn't have just didn't need to happen. So I mean we we did a whole bunch of work around just making sure that civil objects were just being drawn in a more efficient manner. So a lot of a lot of big performance improvements and we're still working on performance on civil 3D. So more to come. Nice. Nice. Cool. So, you know, look, I, I, I'll say this, right? One of the things that, you know, we spend a lot of time working, and, and when I say we, I, I, I mean I, because we all know Rocco doesn't actually do any work. Um, I do nothing. <laughs> he does nothing. nothing. He collects all the money. It's all he does here, Tim. Um, but yeah, we, we do. We spend a lot of time working with clients uh, in the civil 3D space on their labeling features, right? Uh, you know, the, we work with them on the general processes mm -hmm. and the procedures. But often it's also about, you know, the speed and the reliability of, you know, the dynamic labeling systems in Sybil 3D, right? You know, the, the native ability to auto label and to have items like, you know, elevations and inverts and, and such like that update on the fly when, when you make changes are great, right? But, but sometimes I think, you know, that, that sheer amount of available data on the screen that's constantly updating and regenerating, that can cause some, some of the slowdowns, right? And the problems that we see. Um, and I think that's particularly true of survey plans, right? Because they can just have a crazy amount of point and point cloud labels. Um, and, and, you know, with those, right, sometimes even a simple zoom command can, can bog down your system just because of all that label data. Um, so, you know, Tim, I was looking at this latest update, and it seems like you guys have done a lot of work improving how civil 3D labels are handled. What, what, what can you tell our listeners about that? 
Yeah, you're dead on. So, I mean, that was one of the big areas we looked at this this particular release was just labels. Because like you said, there there could be just thousands upon thousands of labels in a just one civil 3D drawing. And so, I mean, the processing time it takes to regenerate those labels every time either an object has changed or you do a pan and zoom and that sort of thing. And that's, that's a case where like, um, one of the things that, I mean, just going back to what I said earlier about the whole things happening in a viewport, like all those drawing, all those labels that were like outside of a viewport were all being drawn just all the time, like regenerated, redrawn every time that like the mouse moved and stuff like that. And it was just really slowing things down. And so we did a deep dive into all the civil 3D labeling commands and just kind of um, did an assessment of kind of where performance was breaking down just with generally working with your drawings. And so we actually added um, a whole bunch of new options just right down at the uh, the status bar in Civil 3D. So if you look down at the lower right hand corner of Civil 3D 2023.2, you'll see a couple new buttons down there. And um, there's things down there such as like, like I said, with panning and zooming, if you, there's a certain object, there's certain, I'm sorry, a certain option that it's redrawing labels when panning and zooming. And so that's a toggle that lets you like switch this toggle on and it will basically let you, if you hold the mouse button down and drag, then you'll see that like some of the, a lot of the labels that weren't, that were like, if you're like dragging and an alignment is like kind of exposing more of itself in the viewport as you're dragging. You might see with this thing on that those the alignment labels aren't being generated until you release the mouse button and place it. And then once you release it, then those alignment labels are generated. So it's it, that's basically telling you that those alignments that weren't visible before weren't being drawn um, when they were still outside the viewport. So it's just, again, just things outside of a viewport not being drawn, slowing th is um, a good way to speed things up for us. Um, other things that we have, there's a couple other options on there to like, we call it um, label group level of detail. And what that's gonna do is like, th think of the example of like in Civil 3D, pre Civil 3D 2023.2, if you were like zoomed way out and you had like a whole bunch of either profile view labels or band labels, that kind of thing, they might, be all be drawn at the same time, but they're they're kind of useless because if you're zoomed out to a certain level, it's all just one big blob of text, and right. it's it's pointless to have all those things drawn for the case where you can't really read them. So what we ended up doing is there's this label group level of detail toggle that if you zoom out, then it'll basically only draw the um, any labels that aren't being overlapped by other labels. Like if they're if the labels are too small to be read, then they're not drawn. If they're overlapping and they can't be read, they're not drawn. And so, and again, once you zoom in, it's reactive so that um, as you get to that certain level of detail where the labels are actually useful, then they're redrawn. So a hmm. bunch of things like that, just to kind of speed things up, make processing of all this data more efficient. And there's actually another toggle that's just show or don't show all Civil 3D group labels. And so if you are in a case where you're just kind of trying to get a bunch of work done and you're not concerned about seeing the labels all at once, you can just turn them off completely and then just go about your business. And then when you're ready to get those annotations back, turn them back on and they'll, they're ready to go. That, so, that's such so, a huge time saver. I mean, that, that kind of thing is yeah. amazing. Right? How many years we spend, you know, developing, you know, no label styles, right? So that we can right. toggle them on and off so we can just get to the underlying, you know, objects we need to modify. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, if that saves you, again, if that saves you from having those no-show styles in your drawing too, then that saves a little bit of little bit of file size and everything. So it's like every little bit helps is pretty much our, our approach that we're using for performance. There are big things that we can do to help performance, like multi-thread plotting and stuff like that. But there are also just little subtle things that you do every day that will really make a difference with people. So that's, we're, we're, going at this performance from all angles, basically. Nice. Nice. I like that. Right, so, you know, Rocco, with, with all the work that we do you know, training and supporting clients in the civil 3D space, um, how important is, is the speed of drawings and so on to, to the clients in general in your discussions? 
Yeah, it's huge. I mean, you know, the people live and breathe in this program, right? I mean, it's, you know, eight hours, 10 hours a day, they, they sure. have it open. So it's um, it's definitely a big thing. I, I, I've heard quite a number of folks, particularly around um, pipe networks and pressure pipe networks, you know, complain about um, about performance. So these are exciting changes. I, I think uh, it's a lot for folks to look forward to. No, I and again, agree. if they're if they're on, um, you know, as part of the the AEC collection, they're they're entitled to to be able to download it, you know, and and, and use it right away. So, um, good thing. definitely something that should be put to use. No doubt, right? yeah. Like, I mean, if you're not using it, <laughs> yeah. The fortunate, the the really good thing is, is that it seems to be people seem to be picking up on it because I mean, we've we've done a couple of different customer satisfaction surveys over the last couple of years and. Um, like we did our first one before we started really hitting on this performance issue and um, we just did one we just did a follow-up customer satisfaction survey oh boy it was at the beginning of this year or mid middle of the year I think it was and I mean the the stats that we got I mean the customers that identified themselves as using civil 3d 2022.1 and higher like when we really first started to roll out the performance improvements um, their level of satisfaction is higher than it is with the people that are still on earlier versions. So it's 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 really good to see that people are um, starting to kind of take notice and that some of the work that we're doing here is starting to pay off for customers. Yeah, now, like I said, it's it's your know, performance is always the number one issue with clients. They always need it to be faster. There's no such thing as fast enough. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. Okay, folks, so let's take a quick break here to uh, let our sponsors get a word in. Uh, but when we get back, I want to uh, pick Tim's brain a little bit about some of the really cool new features in the uh, the twenty the new twenty twenty two or twenty three excuse me uh, update for Civil three D. All right, so stand by, folks. We'll be back in just a minute with more of the Cattle Call podcast. Hey, everybody! This is Jim and Rocco with Zen Tech Consultants, and we wanted to talk to you a little bit today about the training options that we have available here for you guys at Zen Tech Consultants. We offer public training classes as well as private custom courses for all of your software and design needs. So, Rocco, why don't you tell the folks what kind of uh, training we offer and how do they reach out to us to get it going for them? Yeah, Jim, we cover everything from uh, from Bluebeam to Autodesk to Microsoft to BricsCAD uh, to civil site design training and beginner through to advanced level topics. Uh, like you said, both public and uh, and private courses. Um, if you've got if you got a group and want to run a class specifically for your team, we can help you. So just uh, feel free to hit our website. We're at zentechconsultants.net. That's Z E N T E K, or you can give us a ring eight six six eight two four 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 five nine, or even drop us an email sales at zentechconsultants.net. There you go, Zentech Consultants for all of your technology training needs. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Cattle Call Podcast. We're talking with Tim Yaris, one of our all-time favorite guests here on the podcast, uh, all about the new features in the Civil 3D for 2023.2 update. Um, and in the first half, we, we kind of focused on the speed and performance improvements, right? But in this side of the show, I kind of want to talk about more of the fun stuff, right? I want to, I want to see what nice new features and tools we get to play with. Um, so, so Tim, I, I know a really big thing for your team, um, is listening to user feedback, right? And trying to get their wish list items integrated into each release. Um, so what, what customer requests actually made the cut into the 2023.2 release? Great question. So, I mean, yeah, like you said, I mean, we're absolutely listening to customer feedback and we take that in, into account whenever we're building out the product roadmap and whenever we're kind of picking out things that we really want to focus on for an upcoming release. And so a couple of examples of that this time around that I think the probably the, the one that I'm most excited about is quarter transitions. So um, this is an idea that's been out on the Civil 3D Ideas forums for quite some time. And it's it, it's been in like the top, I think, 10 since we picked off a lot of the other like higher voted things up there but really popular idea up there. And then once we kind of migrated that over to our civil 3D, our, our civil infrastructure product, our public roadmap, that got the most votes by far as well. So basically what we've done here is we've given you 
this new ability to let's say like if for example you have a quarter that you want to like transition a maybe a daylight slope from like i don't know four percent to two percent or something something along those lines just work with me here um <laughs> if you want to be able to create that sort of transition um and, in previous versions, there was a lot of kind of manual editing that you had to do or targeting workflows and stuff like that. So you had to have different targets to do things like bus bays or lane widenings and stuff like that. Um, what we've done with this quarter transitions workflow is basically give you the ability to um, use any subassembly parameter that you have as a an input to transition. So for example, if a subassembly has like a width parameter, you can say between station 500 and station 750, I want to transition from 12 feet width to 24 feet of the of width or something like that. And we give you the options to kind of fudge in some things like I want to be able to use different taper types, like whether it's an a, reverse curve or just a straight line in between the, the two points, you can do that. Um, so, and this is all about making sure that um, you don't have to have necessarily all that supporting geometry to do things like having targets associated with it. And it's also, it simplifies the quarter model itself because you don't necessarily have to have um, too many custom ass custom assemblies and sub-assemblies that are associated with it, and then you don't have to have all of the regions that you create in order to kind of make those types of transitions happen that you would have had to do in previous versions of Civil 3D. Yeah, that's and again, amazing. This, yeah, that, that's really those, that I haven't seen that one yet. That that this is a new one for me. So I I love this idea. Check it out. It's it's pretty cool. And I mean, it's this all goes back to I mean, making it easier. I'm sorry. This, this again goes back to performance. So it's like if a quarter has fewer targets, fewer um, sub assemblies, fewer regions, then the quarter is it's snappier. It rebuilds more quickly. And um, some of the other things that we've done are just with this whole quarter transitions workflow is we wanted to make it easier to reuse these transitions like throughout your project. So what you can do is like if you build a transition that like one of my favorite use cases for it is the ever popular, ever painful process of modeling like an ADA ramp and mm -hmm. for a quarter. Um, you can build a transition that will drop the curb and all that kind of good stuff and create your, uh, your ADA curb from station X to station Y. And then it'll basically let you say, okay, I have that transition for my curb, my driveway or ramp or whatever. I can actually take that, export it out to a, just a simple CSV file that I can then import back into either other areas along that same corridor, or I can save it that CSV file out to a project location, then I can import that into other drawings and stuff like that. So just to, again, just save picks and clicks and save you from recreating the same conditions that you've already created. Like if you have a hundred driveways in a subdivision, then there's no reason that you should have to model that thing a hundred times. This, this is all about speeding you up and making, again, just making the end user themselves more efficient and then just making the software itself just more performant. So that's what we're trying to do is, at a nutshell, just make things faster. That That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, how many times I have been doing exa it's exactly, as soon as you said that, my first was, oh my God, how many subdivisions have I had to break that model down manually one driveway at a time yep. to get the aprons in? Oh, what a huge benefit that is. I, mean, I, I, I love that you put so much effort into client requests, right? It's, it's honestly, it's one of the things I've always liked about the civil 3D system is, is, is that responsiveness, which you look, I, I'm not trying to bash anybody at Autodesk. I know you work with all those guys, but, mm -hmm. but that isn't always evident in all of the Autodesk product lines. Um, and I will say, you know, your group always seems to put in user requests into each update, right? You're kind of along, alongside of more of those like formally planned or roadmap type updates, um, mm -hmm. you know, but, but the roadmap tools are always huge though, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's where we always get all of the, the really new and, and noteworthy tools, the stuff that really makes people sit up and go, ooh, there's a big change yeah, right? that works for me, right? Um, so you know, are there any new tools like that in, in this uh, .2 release that, that might surprise some of our listeners? So, oh, surprising thing. So there are a couple things. So there's, I mean, 
other customer satisfaction issues that are just long-term customer requests that people have asked for. Um, so we have separate gravity and pressure networks, right? Mm. Um, long-standing request has been the ability to, they want to be able to connect them to do like model force main systems and stuff like that. And so um, one of the things that we did in DOT2 was give you the ability to do that. So basically you can take a pressure pipe from one network and connect it to a gravity structure and label it so that the one label has like all the information for the structure and for the connecting pressure pipe and all that kind of good stuff. Um, again, long-standing requests that we're really happy to have. Um, on the on the front of things that are like might surprise you, maybe maybe in a good, I hope in a good way, but, or maybe in some people it'll just be like an oh finally type <laughs> of way. But um, so subassembly composer is something that not necessarily all our customers use, but those who need to use it, it's it's critical. And it's it's a tool that we haven't really given much love to over the last several years. And mm -hmm. so we actually did a bunch of work in, in subassembly composer this time around. Um, things like, I think in the earlier version, the Civil 3D 2023, we actually had the whole idea of a version parameter. It was a longstanding request. So that's in there, which is a big win. Um, but we also added a bunch of other things to, again, just make things more efficient. So we have this notion of a, um, a predefined point, point, shape, and link code library where think about like if you're building out a custom subassembly and you have like 20 points that you need to um, define like codes for. In the previous versions of Subassembly Composer, you had to go in and manually key in all the different points for like if you had like a top link code that you wanted to use and you had like 10 different top links in this particular subassembly, you had to manually key in TOP, 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 and it's inevitable that you get, you'd fat finger it and stuff like yep. that and you'd have typos and things <laughs> I goof do. up. I do that constantly. Yeah, I hear you. So we, we basically have it so that again, CSV file that you can just basically import into a subassembly that will give you like a standard list of a drop down of like all of the like, okay, if I'm defining a point, I can say, okay, my code is, I click the little field where I would normally key in my point code and it gives me like a drop down list of, okay, I can pick from top, I can pick from datum, I can pick from whatever. And um, it just, it enforces that um, standardization so that everybody in your organization is using the same point codes and it's it, again it just saves um, typos and that sort of thing and so again just it's all about reuse and making you a little bit quicker and things like I mean we added a couple other tools in there like find and replace for variables and codes and stuff like that it was a popular request that we made it in made it into some assembly composer and a couple other things that I'm sure I'm forgetting but yeah good stuff I mean for things that we haven't touched in a long time, it's, yeah, it's good to finally get back to them. Ah, it's a very good thing. Yeah, like I said, you know, I use so you know the the subassembly composer a lot myself. So yeah, and it it it, it was one of my wish list items. So I'm real happy to hear you guys finally gave it a little bit of love. That's a good thing. So nice. All right. So yeah, look, you know, it seems like every time that Tim Tim comes on the show, I bring up the the one tool uh, that is still genuinely impressing me with with every update that drops, and that is the Project Explorer feature inside Civil 3D. Uh, and look, anybody who's listening, if you guys have not heard our extensive discussions on that with Tim already, uh, you should really go back to our episode list and find anything, any of the ones on Project Explorer. It's a tool that everybody in the in the infrastructure space, right, from, from entry-level drafters to senior engineers, y'all need to be working with it every day. Um, and I, look, I think particularly engineers and, and PEs who have reporting and oversight responsibilities, y'all can't live without this tool. So just throwing that out there. Y'all. Y'all, that's I hey. I thought you're from New Jersey. I am, but you know, every <laughs> once in a while, I like to dip into my Southern heritage, which I don't really have any of, but it just sounds good. <laughs> so that's the cattle portion of that, 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 call, that's, right? it's, it's the cattle call. The cattle gets me to the South. <laughs> I like the way you think, Tim. Those are good answers. There you go. <laughs> All right, so, so Tim, so, so tell me, good things about the the project explorer in this release are there updates to it that that we should be looking for absolutely yeah ah, project perfect. explorer it's it's one of my favorite tools as well and so i mean 
for that, so we've done a bunch of stuff for 23.2 as well. So a um, couple things that hadn't been supported that were popular requests that we now have support for in 23.2, catchment objects. Um, that was one of the kind of gaps in just overall civil 3D objects that hadn't been supported. So we have catchment objects. Um, we can add those to your tables and reports, view and edit, all that kind of good stuff within Project Explorer. They've got their own special tab, just like all the other objects do. So that's a, that's definitely a good thing. Um, and the other really big one that we added support for was not an object, but um, I would say almost even better, is we now support property set data within Project Explorer. Um, so, I mean, a lot of customers have been really leveraging the heck out of property set data over the last quite a few years just to use it to define just ad hoc data, data that's not necessarily supported natively by the civil 3D objects. And so essentially anything that you have defined on a civil 3D object as property set data can now be included in the tables and reports in Project Explorer. Um, it's one handy place to view and edit all that property set data as opposed to kind of digging through the properties palette and the, just the standard AutoCAD properties mm -hmm. palette. You can see all that now in the nice big um, Project Explorer interface. And so, and we're still making some tweaks on how property set data can be managed within Project Explorer, but um, this this first time out of the gate with 23.2 is a huge, huge step in the right direction with property set data. Um, and I guess the last thing I'll, I'll just put another plug in for Project Explorer is just a reminder that, I mean, one of the things we talked about at in, in the podcast that I came to after Autodesk University was, again, just kind of the, we I mentioned the fact and just want to reiterate it again, that um, as of October, um, Project Explorer isn't, re Project Explorer and grading optimization for that matter, aren't any longer restricted to just the customers who use the AEC collection. So, I mean, as of October, all Civil 3 customers have access to both Project Explorer and grading optimization. So there's no excuse to not use it. There so go. go out there and grab it. All right, absolutely. And and, you know, and that kind of leads me to my, my question here that I want to I wanna ask Rocco, right? Um, exactly what Tim was saying, right? Every time that we talk about Project Explorer, I always wind up asking you the same thing. And I never like the answer you give me. Has it really <laughs> caught on with our infrastructure clients yet? Yeah, we don't, you know, I mean, I see people checking out our, our, our the podcast and and we've done a webinar on it. Um, but from a from a deployment standpoint or from a training standpoint, I I haven't run into enough people that are using it. So so get to it, folks. There I mean, you go. <laughs> <laughs> tell your friends. Hey, tell everybody. I'm I'm telling you, people, this this is I love this tool. If, if I had had this when I was working in production, I'd have, I'd have been the civil god. They'd have, they'd have loved me and I'd have owned the company in a year. Um, instead, I'm stuck working with Rocco. See? So, Tim, it's all your fault for not developing Project Explorer sooner. You see how mean he is to me, Tim? Oh, I'm see? sorry. It's all my fault. I'm used to it. <laughs> there you go. All right. So we're, we're, we're going to end out here with my usual closing question for a guest, though, you know, honestly, let, let's face it, Tim is on the show so much, he's really more like family at this point. He's not a guest, um, you know, but he's the good kind of family, though. He's not like the annoying drunk uncle type, you know, kind of like Rocco is. So we like Tim around here. So, <laughs> I, I could be. I mean, yeah, could. we're just saying just some burger before the next show. We'll be That'll sad. call after dark. We'll, yeah, I'll come on and <laughs> Have a couple of beers and have a good time. I like this kind of cattle call after dark. That could be a whole other show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, too funny. All right. So, Tim, there, there's a question, right? What what else should people know about this update that I didn't get around to ask you? Um, yeah. So, I mean, my buddy Ramesh isn't here. So, I feel <laughs> I, I feel like I'd be – I, I got to represent him and kind of put a plug in for a couple of his babies here. Um Geotechnical modeler. I mean, it's an extension for Civil 3D that we've been doing some great stuff with, and there's a new version of that out there as well. So, I mean, I won't speak for Ramesh, but I mean, he's got some really good stuff happening in the, on the geotech module. Um, second one is, again, Recap. So, Recap Pro, we've done a ton of work on that just to, again, just it's all about performance. I mean, putting more of the workflows 
cloud-based as far as recap is concerned so that you don't have to tie up your computer um, with all that heavy point cloud data. So um, highly recommend that you guys have a chat with Ramesh to kind of pick his brain about all the great stuff that's happening in recap especially. So actually, I think we're already, we we already talked to Ramesh. See? Oh, and see and better, he didn't man. talk about your good stuff. So you're a better friend than he is. <laughs> Dude, man, I got to have a talk with him. <laughs> I'm saying we'll bring him on the cattle call tonight too. <laughs> we're really going to have nice. the there you go. show. There'll be much I bourbon, bourbon and much guy. cuss words. <laughs> see, Theon yeah. guy is my, no, my Southern a, again. <laughs> yeah. Ramesh is a Scotch, Scotch guy, actually. There you so go. So, so am I actually. So. I'll go with the Scotch. There you go. It's all set. All right, folks, with that, we're going to let you all get back to your work day. But before we go, I do want to thank Tim once again for being here. It is always a pleasure when you're on the show, sir. Thank you so much. Hey, my pleasure. I'm really happy to be on here anytime, guys. I appreciate appreciate you guys having me back on over and over again. <laughs> thank you, Tim. All right, folks, we are out of here. We will catch you next time on the Cattle Call Podcast. All right, everybody, today's Cattle Call was brought to you courtesy of Zentech Consultants. That's Rocco and I. Uh, Zentech Consultants works with design and manufacturing firms to help our clients purchase and implement the software that they need in these complex industries. Uh, we provide a single point of contact for clients to buy, develop, and learn the most vital software systems for your specific needs. Uh, Zentech strives to be your trusted technology partner from your initial needs all the way through long-term support and training for your entire staff. So, Rocco, why don't you tell them how to reach out to Zentech? All right, yeah, you can reach out to us through zentechconsultants.net. You can email us at sales at zentechconsultants.net. Or you can even call us, 866-824-4459. Excellent. We look forward to hearing from you all.